is deserving of your praise this morning. He is deserving of your worship. Lift up your hands and give him praise. Celebrate the King of glory. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your right hand with me as we confess God's word. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your unending faithfulness towards me. Thank you for the high dimension of sudden victories that is evident in my life and in all that concerns me. This morning, I boldly declare that I have help for sudden victories in the name of Jesus, the kind that men cannot explain. I break out completely from the limitations and barriers of men and the systems of this world. I am a carrier of the life of God. I am a partaker of his divine nature. Therefore, I can never be extinguished. I can never be silenced. I can never be relegated. I can never be stopped. In the name of Jesus, I am a carrier of the favor of God. Therefore, doors open up to me of their own accord. Doors of influence, doors of financial increase and advancement, doors of lifting are flinging open for me in this season. This morning, I declare as the word is taught, I receive light into every dark situation in my life. I receive understanding and answers for every question in my heart. In the name of Jesus, the life transforming power of the word of God permeates every aspect of my life. And I live with testimonies all around. I declare that this is my service of increase, turnaround, manifestation, and miracles. I receive my pastor as my prophet this morning. Every word he releases finds speedy expression in my life. In Jesus' name, I declare that I'm a proof producer. I'm a record breaker. My life yields diverse kinds of, of fruits from today's service. I live transformed and lifted in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because it is so. In Jesus' name we pray. If you're celebrating Jesus, I believe you can do a better job than that. It says, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, the Lord has ordained strength that we may destroy the works of darkness. Uh -huh. Could it be? Could it just be that you are not destroying the works of darkness because your praise is not fireful? Because your praise is too cute. Scripture says, clap your hands, all ye people of God, and give unto the Lord our God a joyful shout. So I need you this morning to open up your mouth and give God the highest shout of praise, the highest shout of victory. Scream! Get your dance, somebody. Let me see you put your dance. Your hands like this. Yeah, that'll be the love that's 
Yes, sir. Woo! Come on. This morning we'll be reading from Psalms 98. We'll be reading responsively. I'll read the first, you read the second. Psalms 98 from verses 1 to 6. Psalms 98 from verses 1 to 6. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. He has remembered his mercy and his faithfulness to the house of Koza. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and with the sound of a psalm, with trumpets and the sound of a horn. Shout joyfully before the Lord the King. Shout to the Lord! Are you shouting or oh what? Are you shouting or oh what? Come on, the shout of the king is in the midst. Lift up a shout of praise. No, 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 no. See, if if your if your praise is commensurate, is commensurate to the size of your God, then you give him that. But if your God is bigger and larger than life, then you give him a praise that is worth. Somebody lift up a shout! Oh yeah! Let me see you clap! Come on! Let me see you clap! Hey! Let me see you!
Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree. I decree. And declare. And declare. I decree. I decree. And declare. And declare. There's a walking. There's a walking. Mighty walking. Mighty walking. Of the Lord. Of the Lord. In my house. In my house. There's a walking. Oh. Mighty walking. Mighty walking. Of the Lord. Of the Lord. Of my job. In my family, we enjoy mighty supply like never before. Me and my house, me and my house, we dominate from sea to sea. I walk in hell, I swim in plenty. My bars are full, I'm never empty. I receive daily hell for sudden victory throughout the year. I decree, men and women, bend over backwards just to help me. Wealth and riches come to me in abundance every day. Wealth and riches come to me in abundance every day. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. presence of God this morning this is where we are sure that in the presence of God there is always fullness 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 of joy come on celebrate Jesus one more time hallelujah you may have your seats in God's presence as we read through a very few praise reports the first I'm taking is of peaceful peacefully fine she wants to give God thanks of what happened now she said she was sick um, she got very ill on a Friday morning, and then it got worse through the day. And on Saturday, it got so bad, um, she had rigors, she was shivering very badly, and was very uncomfortable. And she had a, a sibling that wasn't really um, into the whole speaking in tongues, into the whole, you know, that angle of the spirituality. And that one was trying to take care of her through the day. And at some point in the day, she just got really angry. Like, what kind of nonsense is this? And she just took out her phone, found some of the confessions, and just started speaking them. Started speaking them, started speaking, started speaking, started confessing. Before you knew it, it didn't take up to how long. She started sweating. And the sickness that had lasted for over 24 hours within 10 minutes left her system. She became the testimony because right there, her siblings saw it and was wondering what happened. And she started explaining to her, this is how it works. And right there in that room, as she explained to her, spoke to her, the Spirit of God just hits that sister. That one started speaking in tongues right there. Ha! You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. As it happened in Acts, the Holy Spirit came down heavily on her sister, started speaking in tongues. She said, from that day, they have had awesome fellowship in the Holy Spirit. From that sister, that's not something you just clap for like nothing happened. Come on, celebrate Jesus for that. Hallelujah. Praise God. The next one here is of Don J. White. 
Don J. White, I think that's his stage name. He's a comedian. Now, he wants to give God thanks. Two things God did for him. The first, he said um, at Asokoro Extension, he had a project he was working on. He was building some accommodations um, he wanted to put on rent. And he ran out of cash at the point when um, things were not really working for some people, the world system. And this was like five years ago, so he abandoned the project and he left it. Now, he came here to church. We had the refresh. Um, and when the refresh came up, he said he had never fasted in his life. So that was the first time. And you know when you sacrifice to God like that, heaven opens. So he said before he knew it, when he came in for the three days, fasted, he says as if they rang a bell. The project he had abandoned for five years because of no cash. People started coming to give him money that they wanted to move into it. So within 30 days, he received over seven digits amounts finished the project, had people move in, and he had monies in the bank. Some are sitting. Maybe you don't want that kind of praise report. But for some people, within 30 days, seven digits income from what God will do. God will drop your name in the hearts of people to favor you in the name of Jesus. Come on, give Jesus praise. And the second praise report he wanted to give now, he said um, one pastor was preaching for us to keep pressing on at that time. He was expectant for um, something in his career that would announce him globally. And um, you will know about, there was a movie that was shooting in Abuja at the time. And so while he was shooting, he said someone just called him up that um, he should go up, he should go there. Um, he didn't know why, out of the blue, when he was pressing on and praying for God to open the door for him. And as he just went there, someone that was supposed to be playing a role in the movie fell sick. And this is a role that over 2,000 people had auditioned for. And I just asked him, can you do the part? I said, sure, I can do the part. Before you know it, he's in the movie. I'm talking about Merry Men 2. So he's in that movie now, and it has announced him globally. So he came to give God thanks. Oh, you don't sound excited for him. You don't sound excited for him. I'm excited. Come on, give Jesus praise for Don J. White. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, the next one is of Mrs. Uche Ezenwa. She wants to give God thanks. Now, she said towards um, the whole of 2018 didn't really go well for them. Um, so she said she had decided that 2019 must be different. So she got CDs um, and she just started chewing on the word, digging into the word. Sometimes God would give her instructions to dance through the night, even when things weren't going well. They had bills to pay. They had pressures from all sides. And she said, all of a sudden, God just laid her name in the heart of someone to just help her. And that one just got others involved, and they were able to just give her some funding. She opened up her shop um, somewhere in a very good part of town, and she just started a new line of business. That's the first one God opened for her. Secondly, this same person just dropped her name in a major government organization, just called her up. Do you have companies? Yes, I have some companies registered. Okay, bring the name of your companies and bring the documents. Dropped it there. Within a few months, they gave her a contract. Before she knew it, they paid her in digits she has never seen before. So overnight, all the bills and pressures they had, God just wiped them off. God just wiped. Maybe you don't have bills. Maybe you don't have things you're believing God to pay for. But perhaps somebody wants God to step in financially for them. God will step in your case in the name of Jesus. Come on, celebrate Jesus for that praise report. Okay, because of time, I'll take the last one. This last one is of Cyril, Cyril Blessing. Now, um, she wants to give God thanks. Now, she said a while back, she had a dream, and in the dream, she saw her father's obituary. And then, because of what had been happening, um, uh, and the kind of prayers we've been praying in church, she just said, and she remembered pastor saying that, look, sometimes if you allow some things to happen, you will see some warnings in the spirit. And if you just keep quiet, that is going to be your own case. So she decided, no, she was going to take this up. Now, she said the way they prayed is not as fresh as she's looking. They took the ballistic prayers from church, herself and her sister. Every night they were kabashing that thing. They were throwing arrows from scriptures every night. So she said one night as they were praying, the whole place is as if the house started shaking. And then she got into a trance. And then she saw herself, her siblings, her father, the family. And there was like a fire that just drew a circle around them. 
And as the sister kept praying in tongues, she saw the fire rising up, rising up, rising up, rising up like a fence. And she heard a voice saying that I will be the wall of fire around you. And I'll be the glory in the midst of you. She didn't know they continued praying for another three hours. By the time they opened their eyes, she just had to get to work the next day. Went to work like nothing happened. A few days later, they called. They said the father's sister died that very morning. The whole family knew she was diabolical. So whatever attack had been plotted by them standing, the Lord became the wall of fire around them and the glory in the midst of them. I decree and declare by reason of this praise report, the pharaohs that have been chasing, God will stand for you in the name of Jesus. The Lord has become a wall of fire around each and every one of us, around our household, around our businesses, around our children, and around all that concerns us. And every unrepentant pursuer, the Lord will answer them in the name of Jesus. Come on, rise up and give Jesus praise for this phenomenal praise report. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, all right. Before we, we're about to tear this place up, all right? Tell your neighbor, say, testimonies are everywhere around. Testimonies I wish I could everywhere. hear you, Koza. Say, testimonies are everywhere around. Okay, so like I said, we're about to tear this place up. But before we do that, we want to tell you about our latest single. It's called Testimony. Is somebody excited? See, it's available on all digital platforms, Apple Music, iTunes, Spotify, Deezer, everywhere, everywhere you go, testimonies are everywhere. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right. And then after the service, we're going to have a photo shoot session just outside Pastor's car park there. If you want to come take some photos with the gratitude, let's do this. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. You don't sound like you have a testimony already. Oh, come on, come on, come on. You know what I'm talking about. Woo! Yeah, well. <laughs> Let me see you clap your hands like this, everybody. Woo! Testimonies are everywhere around. Prophecy. 
the middle of a testimony. but it's a very prophetic, victorious sound from heaven. It has a lot of authority, a lot of possessing your possessions in it. You know, sometimes we go to shows and we pay 500,000 to say rubbish into our destiny. This is empowering your destiny as you say it, as you hear it. As you release this sound into your atmosphere, you find that your things in your life just begin to shift. Sometimes your issue does not need 20 hours prayer. A prophetic sound from heaven can release the atmosphere. Are you in the middle of a testimony this morning? Can I hear a shout of praise unto our God? Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, there are testimonies of God's faithfulness everywhere. I am right in the middle of it. If you say you are in the middle of it, you will be in the middle of it. It's not going to happen tomorrow. He says it's happening right now, right now, right now, right now. Say to your neighbor, it's happening for me right now, right now, right now. Everywhere I need something, I receive it now. Hallelujah. Can I hear a shout unto our God this morning? Your neighbor say it's happening now, 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 now. <laughs> John chapter number 16, verse 23. We're still going to sing that song again. Yeah. It's happening now. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Can we back up a bit? Okay. Therefore, let's go to 23. The Bible says, in that day you will no longer ask me, talking about Jesus, talking about himself. In that day you, you will no longer ask Jesus anything. I tell you the truth. My father will give you whatever you ask. Don't you never say you can have whatever this morning? <laughs> How? In the name of Jesus. Verse 24. It says, until now you have not asked for anything in my name. He says, ask. Turn to your neighbor this morning and say, I dare you to ask this morning. Ask, and you will receive it. And when you receive it, your joy will be complete. I want to prophesy to five people that in this season of testimony everywhere, your joy will be complete. In the name of Jesus, declare, say, my joy is complete. As I place demand this morning, as I speak this morning, my joy is complete in the name of Jesus. Over my relationship, my joy is complete. Over my children, my joy is complete. Over my peace, my joy is complete. Over my finances, my joy is complete in the name of Jesus. Don't forget to add the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Turn to verse 25. Hallelujah. It says, though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly, plainly about, my about my father. In that day you will ask in my name, I am not saying that I will ask the father on your behalf. No, the father himself loves you because he has loved me and have, re and have believed that I came from God. Hallelujah. I came from the Father and I entered the world. Now I am leaving the world. I'm going back to the Father. Then his disciples said, let's go to Psalm 144. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, I receive complete joy. In this season. In the name of Jesus. I receive joy. Unspeakable. Full of glory. I am not the same. In the name of Jesus. I am strengthened with joy in the name of Jesus. 
I declare over my destiny that depression leaves me now. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Bible says that you can be justified with your mouth. Hallelujah. This morning you will be justified. Can you begin to speak in other tongues and say, Master, Taya, blah, blah, blah. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. Begin to release that joy, that joy. Oh, release that joy, that joy. Man, da 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 you know, feeling or the way they are looking affects you. You are not singing to a mere man. You are singing to the king of kings and the lord of lords. The one that sits in the middle of the earth and the earth, the, the inhabitants are like grasshopper. No matter how tall your neighbor is, God says, I can't even imagine how tall God is. I can't even imagine how long his hands are. I am singing. Touch your neighbor say, this morning I'm shouting. I'm singing. I'm dancing. I can't hear you declare it boldly. See, I'm singing. I'm shouting to the one and only. The one who gives victory to kings. I've been going to man. Man has not been able to give me a lasting victory. I've been visiting man. Man has not been able to take away my situation. They've not even been able to help themselves. Not to talk of helping you. They've not been even been able to help them. You, you highly esteem man. Hey, you'll be greeting them and be making them feel like God. We are, this is a house of honor. We honor people. But let me tell you something. There is a one and only God that gives victory. If you are victorious this morning, if you serve a God that gives victory, can I hear a shout? Don't care what anybody thinks. Can you shout? To the one who gives victory to kings. Who delivers who? His servant David from the deadly sword. Deliver me and rescue me from the hands of foreigners whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. Verse 12 said, Then our sons in their youth will be like well-watered, well-nurtured plants, and our daughters will be like pillars carved to, a, to adorn a palace. Verse 13, Our bands will be filled with every kind of provision. Our sheep will increase by thousands, by ten thousands of thousands. Are you in the house this morning? Can you shout unto Jesus this morning? Lift your hands and bless him. Lift your hands and bless him. Thank you for the victory. Thank you for the victory. Hallelujah. Come on, bring your hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. Psalm 3 is one of my favorite scriptures. Very powerful scriptures. Very, very powerful. The Bible says, How many are my foes? Many have risen against me. Many have said concerning me that there's no help for me in God. But in the middle of people saying that there's no help for me in God, you, you O oh Lord, are the shield for me, my glory, and the lifter of my head. It says, I cried aloud unto the Lord, and you heard me out of your holy hill. I lie down to sleep, and you are waking me again because you've sustained me. I shall not be afraid of ten thousands of people. You are down because one person was against you, or two people. Ten thousands of people that have been against me. Arise, O Lord, deliver me, O my God. It says, you struck the enemy on the cheekbone. You broke the teeth of the ungodly. And it says, salvation belongs to God. And his blessing rests upon his people. I love Psalm 27 also when it says, Now my head is lifted up above all my enemies. That shall be your story. You know, we have the mind of Christ. And you see, I've observed Christians when they are listening to a song they've never heard before, they just switch off. 
God says, sing unto me a new song. His mercies are new every morning. Always open yourself to learn new things. And flow because you have the mind of Christ. Lift your hands to heaven, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You're my glory. And the lifter of my head. You're my glory. And the lifter of my head. For thou, O oh Lord, art a shame for me. You're the glory and the lifter of my head. Come on, sing with me. You're my glory and the lifter of my head.
Mahaya had a shield for me. You're the glory. you're going through. Come on, say to the Lord. For that Oh Lord Kalemahaya Mahalaya That is she For me You're the glory
Just go ahead and worship him. This is a cry, oh Lord. This is a heart desire, Lord. Yele le kere baba so de de boko lanta yaba. Iba le 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 bo kara baba so te de ba yanta yaba. To see your face, to know your grace. This is my cry. This is my your grace, the sea, my God. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we honor you today. We love you and we extol and exalt you. And we decree and declare that there is none like you. Father, there are people in this place that need your torch. There are people in this place that need you to step in into circumstances. People need your word. You send your word only to heal and to deliver. Thank you, Lord, for that power that backs up your word. Thank you for the hammer ability. Thank you for the fire ability of the word. Thank you for the washing of the water by the word. Lord, we thank you for the anointing and the help of the Holy Spirit. We thank you because no one in this room and everyone under the sound of my voice in all the campuses will remain the same. We worship you, God. We thank you, Lord. We give you the praise ahead of time for life-changing impact. Come on, Koza celebrates you today. Hallelujah! Amen. Wow, I salute your coming here today. I appreciate you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Would you please reach out to two or three people around you. Come on, tell them how much you love them. Introduce yourself to them. Come on, this is your moment. Shake hands with them. Tell them what you do. Give them compliments. Come on. Say something beautiful to them. Over the world, people are waking up to new strategies and tapping into the mind of God. Come on. You know, we love you in Abuja. And I can't wait to be in all your campuses very soon. And I want to take this privilege to one more time celebrate the Port Harcourt Church on the occasion of their third anniversary. We love you so much and I will soon be there in the name of Jesus. Amen. Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, Those who wait upon the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. If you're here on Tuesday, wave your hands. Let those who are not here be jealous. <laughs> it was a good day for the preacher. <clears throat> it was a good day for the preacher. I feel like giving everyone that, everybody that message for free. 
So I don't know <clears throat> um, what factory, please work it out. If people switch on their Bluetooth around you, let them be able to capture that message after the service. Work it out before the end of the service. Just go to the what factory. You need that message. How many of you feel that everybody needs that message? So because of that, I'm not going to preach the part two today. I'm not going to preach the part two today because we are doing a lot of dedication today. And I need to work that stuff. I need to work that stuff. We preached on two words on, on Tuesday. And I'm going to dwell on another two words on the next Tuesday. Tap your neighbor and say, you can't afford to miss that service. So I just bring an interim message that um, will help you to balance before I see the revelation I want to see it on Tuesday on you. The Bible says, those who wait upon, those who wait upon the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They means not everybody wait upon the Lord. So there are people that know the Lord who don't wait upon the Lord. Now I have heard it and I have also preached it. That word wait, one of the meanings is for someone to, when you go to a restaurant, the waiter waits on you. You go to a very good restaurant where um, they treat their customers nicely. They wait on you. They don't just serve you and go away. They wait on you. I've heard it, I've preached it, I've studied the Hebrew word. But much more than that, to wait means for you to seek God first before you turn to any human being. It's a lifestyle. There are people listening to me right now, they only pray when they have problems. If you are listening to me and you've not been able to pray for days, you are already under attack. A friend of mine who is the pastor said, prayer is the key, prayer is the key. Prayer is not the key, wisdom is the key. Where do you get wisdom from? The letter kills is the spirit that gives the letter power. When you fellowship with God and maintain contact with God on a regular basis, you become a superhuman. Pastor Bjorn, what are you talking about? I'm telling you, you have no idea the grace, the power, the help available to you and I. You have no idea. Some of you will listen to this message. Because I've prayed for you already. The Spirit of God will meet you at the point of your need. You will walk out of this place and you are going to do what I'm going to teach right now. And you will ask yourself, where have I been? Because you will realize that the things you've tried to do by yourself, you try to be like them, you try to talk like them, you try to be in their clique, you try to massage their body, you try to bend over backwards for them. And at the end of the day, you are still where you are at. You will be shocked that you've been walking in the flesh and you've not been able to operate at full capacity because no child of God was designed to function on their own. You need to understand how you're designed. I don't care how much English you can speak and how much degrees you've got like a thermometer and I don't mean to be rude. What I'm trying to say is that no matter how much you try to operate on the surface, you are in the system but you're not part of the system. You are not wired to be self-sufficient. When you see a Christian that does not fellowship with God, you see somebody that is struggling. you just not discovered. You have a lot of facade to cover struggles and pains. A lot of untold pains. Many mistakes they have no business making. Many things they have no business encount encountering with, they begin to deal with. And even angels marvel. With all the power and favor available to you. How could you be here? Even demons gossip about some of us. And they say they are full of power, but they have no idea. Christianity is a lifestyle of absolute dependence on God. And I say that again, because I know I'm talking to 21st century upwardly mobile people. We are carried away with many things. And you know I'm, I'm technological survey. I want you to always upgrade I wanted to always know what's in and be the best. But trust me, the secular system, so people say secular like it's secular, is S-E-C-U-L-A-R. The secular system was designed, it's a genius idea from the devil to make sure that it gives you a lifestyle that you take God out of the system. You take God out of your routine. So the time, the last time you were sick, and you went to the hospital and they pumped some injections in you and you got well. 
it registers something in your mind that you could get healed without God. Until one day, you encounter something that medical science tells you, we can't help you. It will be too late to start developing your faith at that time. God did not make man to function without him. News flash, wake up. I don't care how good you're doing. You will soon hit a waterloo that will make you know that you're just beside yourself. As a pastor, I've been pastoring for 20 years. I'm going to be 21 in February next year. I have seen people come to church humble. When they're dealing with issues, they're ready to come for every meeting. And meetings don't guarantee that you're a good Christian. But it's an avenue to help you to be a good Christian. They pray. They're in contact. They're in fellowship. Once they have a break, they pull away. Don't you think the devil can even give you anything that can pull you away from God? Because he knows you were not designed to survive without God. I'm not saying please pray to God. Please may come to church. No, I'm telling you who you are. When God made and created the earth, the account in Genesis 1 is very interesting. He called things he made out of an entity. But it shocked me that where he called them from, he maintained them there. So if you see creation and it gets interesting from verse 11, if it starts to peruse through Genesis 1, in verse 11, he did not plant the, the ground. He called the trees to come out from the ground. It shocked me that even animals came out of the ground. In verse 25, he didn't create them because this is actually a recreation in Genesis 1. But in Genesis 1, verse 11, he told the plants to come out of the ground. If a tree wants to stop functioning at full capacity, disconnect that tree from it. He told the stars, the moon, to come out of the firmament. The day a star disconnect from that place where he puts it, it will stop shining. Incidentally and apparently, when it came to you and I, he spoke to himself. And when he made man, man was just cadaver. And you know what God did? He bent down. And call something from his inside. And that deposit is inside of you. No matter how wicked people have called you, there is a deposit of God in you. No matter how much you run away from God, there is a part of God. That is what sustains you. Now, if you want a man not to operate at full capacity, disconnect that man from God. God told Adam, the day you eat of this fruit, you will die. Did Adam die? No. Because there are three deaths. There is a death that is a physical death. There is a spiritual death. And there's a second death. So the fact that you're breathing and wearing good clothes and people are shouting about you does not mean that you're operating at, physical, at, at full capacity. You became separated from God. In fact, the Bible explains what happened to him spiritually that you may not know. He became naked. You are exposed without God. The one who made you in the manual says you can't function without him. As a reader, I know so, so, such a such person. What about all this, uh, these people? What about all this? That's why the devil designed another system where people can prosper temporarily and they can function, you know, publicly and cry privately and function under full capacity and they show it to everybody. But if you ask them and they're going to tell you the truth, there are things they're dealing with, particularly trying to cover with a lot of facade. And I don't think you should doubt what I'm saying to you. In Genesis 1.16, I'm going very far. My message is one line. I'm just building a foundation. The Bible says God made two great lights. Somebody say two great lights. I can't hear you, Koza. Come on, Elorin Church, make them know that you can shout better. Are you from Elorin Church? <laughs> then God made two great lights. Now, when you, the two of them are great, but when you compare one to another, one is greater. So the greater one is said to rule the day. In other words, when it's 6 a.m. in the morning, the lesser light that rule the night will say, a greater light, you know, God has given us a command, bye bye, oh, okay, okay, oh, bye, oh. we'll see in the evening. And the, 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 the greater light begins to shine till 6 in the evening. And the process of exchange is called sunset and, you know, and all of that. You understand? And the moon comes in the evening. 
But you see, if you are a good student of science and you're interested in these things, please go study after the service. The moon is not a light. In fact, this greater light is sun. You and I know that. In Psalm 84 verse 11, the Bible says, God is sun. A shield, they will give grace and glory. No good thing will they hold back from those who walk uprightly with him. In Malachi chapter number 4 and verse 2, the Bible calls Jesus the son of righteousness that has arisen with healings in his wings. In James chapter number 1 verse 17, the Bible says God is son and shield. He will give grace and glory. Oh, beg your pardon. Uh, James 1 17 says, all good and perfect gift comes down from above from the father of light with whom there is no variableness, neither a shadow of turning. That is the son they are referring to. Is the father of lights. He says, I'm the light of the world. But he turned to you and said, you are the light of the world. Is he confusing himself? It's because the moon is not a light. The moon is like battery. That stores power. So the moon needs to position to take power from the sun. He stores it for a while. And then in turns and shines on the earth. It's not supposed to take power from the sun and shine back to the sun. It's going to be useless. If all you're just doing is just talking to God. After receiving in church, you should turn to your world and bless your world. The day the moon stopped positioning to receive light from the sun, the moon will stop shining. In Isaiah chapter number 60, he says, arise. There's a positioning to shine. Shine. Oh, I thought I was the light. He said, no. Your light has come. You're not the light. Your light has come. And the glory, the splendor, the beauty, the power, the royalty of the Lord needs to come upon you. That is when Gentiles will run to you. That is the way you and I were designed. But you know what you try to do? Something told you you're self-sufficient. People even brag, I'm self-made. I'm a self-made person. I also, I also. That's the language of the world system. That's not your language. That's not your language. And if you don't understand that your thought pattern starts from your vocabulary and the abundance of your heart is what you speak out and as you think that is who you become, if you don't understand that, you will not be able to function properly. Listen to me. I don't mean to be rude, but let me tell you what I know for a fact. Since the body of Christ started, these are the sets. I'm not talking about you alone. The 21st century Christians are the most powerless Christian that history ever produced. They're so powerless. And when we talk about power, it's not just about falling down. We're talking about results. Results. I, I was so blessed with those testimonies today. Results. A lot of us here are at the mercy of the devil. We don't even know who to turn to. You come to a church like this, oh, you like the atmosphere, you like the music, you like, oh, I like the pastor. I like the way he talks. But you go back to one dreadlock prophet. At your age, somebody is telling you, raise up your armpit, they're having your back for you. Washing away your virtue. Washing away your glory. Messing up your future. You might have a temporary result, but your children are dealing with stuff. Why? You're powerless. Not because power is not available to you. Showed you once and again that the anointing you've received abides. Men know. It settles down. How many of you have taken transilicate before? Magnesium. Hmm? What do they call it? Mist mag. When you leave it for a while, it settles down. The water is on top. The medication is down. What do you need to do? You know, somebody saw the bottle and said, shake before you use The person shook like this before using the water on top of it. <laughs> You've been shaking, shaking everywhere. That's not how to shake. He says, tear up the grace that is in you. Stir it up. He's there. The anointing you've received abides within you. The Bible says he's able to do exceeding abundantly above what you ask a thing according to the power not the one resident, the one you, you've learned how to put to work. They tell you to confess in church, you're looking around. You don't know that is putting that power to work. The Bible says angels hearken to the voice of his word. You need to learn how to give that word a voice. Somebody say, I'm more than conqueror. You see, everybody didn't say, but those who said it just stirred up something. 
Because everything in the kingdom you belong to is voice activated. That's how they activated. The first tutorial God gave Adam on dominion was what will you call this? What will you call your situation? What will you call your wife? What will you call your circumstance? Everything in the kingdom that you've been introduced to, you need to learn. Everything is voice activated. When you, he says, he says, he says in, uh, uh, in, in, in Psalm 53, he said, he said, when I kept quiet, my bones grew, grew old. In. Psalm 34, beg your pardon. Psalm 34. Psalm 32. What's, going, what's wrong with me this morning? Psalm 32. He said, blessed is the man. He said, yeah, 32. He said, when I kept silent, my bones grew. Grew old. Through the groanings all day. When I kept quiet. It shall come to pass whoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You keep your mouth sometimes, you're keeping up, you're keeping your breakthrough. Because everything is voice activated. Lift up your offerings, say to it, others gave it, but you activated yours. Everything, not some things. How were you born again? Jesus died 2,000 years ago. You came out and said something, and something that was done 2,000 years ago was activated like it just started. Everything is voice activated. You need to know that. Another word to replace Christianity is confession. Homologio. Homo and lego. To say the same thing. That's Christianity. Cut this with the Pope, the, 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 the priest will tell you, say after me, they repeat it and they get resolved. Even Muslims sing their prayers. Because whether you sing it, that you saw the way we sang our confession today, somebody, somebody thought it was a joke. Whether you sing it or you... You jump it or you wrap it. Just release it in the atmosphere. It is voice activated. That is why you can see people without eyeballs. You can see people without hands. You could never find anybody born without a tongue. Nobody. Even if they can't talk, God puts the tongue there as an opportunity to at least be able to move your mouth to say something. Because your mouth is actually your dominion. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can somebody shout hallelujah? The Holy Spirit is like a guide to you, like a tour guide. A lot of people listening to me have missed their destiny, missed their path, married the wrong people, they're on the wrong job, they're living in the wrong city, doing the wrong things just because they are not following their tour guides. I want to ask you today, how many things have you involved? To wait is not just to be waiting. Brother, what's happening? Did you hear Pastor Smith? Did I wait upon the Lord? I'm waiting. You will not walk? No, 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 I'm waiting. When will you get married? I'm waiting. And I'm not saying if you're not married that you are not fulfilled. But there are people that want to be married, but they are not positioning themselves like that. Those are the people I'm talking about. When are you doing your master's? Didn't you hear pastor's message? Those who wait. That's not what I'm saying. To wait means those who seek the Lord. Before soliciting human hate. There is trouble. The enemy tells you all hell will break loose. But instead of running out, you run inside. David fought 66 battles and did not lose one. One day, in 1 Samuel 30, they took all his family members, his aides' family members. The Bible says they wept till there was no strength in them to weep anymore. But the Bible says David called for the son of a priest. He told him, give me the ephod. He said, what are you going to do with the ephod? You're a king. Give me the evil. That's what priests use to consult God in those days. Instead of running out, saying, I've never lost a battle, he ran inside. God said, uh uh, David, I thought you were going to depend on your strength. He said, No, sir. I'm here to ask a question. Should I pursue? Should I overtake? God said, For what you've done, pursue, overtake, you will recover all. Three days after, they chose David as a king of Judah. Because that problem was a setup to take him up. God was just asking, what will David celebrate this coronation with? Let me organize a problem for you. But because he asked for a direction, he asked for guide, he didn't depend on his strength. Never lost the battle. Let's go. No, 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 no. Every battle requires new strategies. A lot of battles we shouldn't have lost. A lot of things that we should have surpassed if we understood the power of being with God. We were made for fellowship. He said, these people are formed for myself. They shall glorify me. God was not made for you. You were made for God. God made you for himself.
Who says hallelujah to that? Who says hallelujah to that? Think about how quick you consult other people. Think about how quick you just defer to people. Think about how quick you rest on people. And after resting on them, you now see that they're actually a ham rest of thorns. Because the people you're resting on don't only hurt you, they also need help. No Christian can do much on earth without drawing strength from it. No Christian. I'm not saying no human. Because there are cults you can go and join. There are societies you can go and join. There are people you can go and relate to. And things will change for you. But your end is destruction. But the blessing of the Lord can make rich and add no sorrow. Who says hallelujah to that? Hallelujah. You see, if you saw a car on the street, any car you see, there's an energy driving it. It might be coal. <laughs> it might be diesel. It might be gas, PMS gas. And it might be electric. There's something driving it. What is driving you? What is driving you? Stop dangling your keys and telling me what you can do. Let me see you, let me see you move on the street. You are not made for the car park. You are made for the road. I want to see you on the road. But there's no gas in you. You're jacking. Look you, look you. Ushers can tell you, they can bring out. Now, if I told them to bring 10 people out that jacked to church this morning. There are people that came in, uh, you go that way, they say, oh, thank you. They go there. I said, yeah? Go where? Are you all right? Are they crazy? Are they, see, not be, not be only, are they mad? People that are jacking, blame everybody. And all you need to do is to go to the filling station. Some people, they are jacking. They don't understand. They jack to the point that the field finishes in them. Now, in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit don't leave you. But you can shut him down. You can grieve him. All right? It can be dysfunctional in your life. It can be shut down in your life. So it's a different ballgame from Samson who shook himself and the Holy Ghost was not there. But you can shut the Holy Spirit and shut that place permanently. That's why the Bible does not say, please don't serve two gods. It says you can't serve two gods. Once you serve one, you shut down the other. Once you serve the one, then you, when you, shut, when you serve the other, then you shut down the one. You know what some people do? They go higher. Uh, what do you call this thing? A twin vehicle. They are sitting in a V12 engine. Oh, have I lost you? I think I should come to the people on this side. They are sitting in a V12 engine. How many liters? Who can tell me how many liters? Huh? Maybe 26 liter engine. Maybe. Solid for silencers. They switch on the battery lights. So they are able to put on the AC. They are jamming red. But a twin vehicle is towing them. They are not able to operate at full capacity. Help your neighbor say, go on, go on, go and get some gas. Go and get some gas. <laughs> say, come on, go and get plugged in into God. Because you were not made to just function on your own. A lot of people have been disappointed. Your phone was beeping. Tu, 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 tu. People say, what's that? I said, my battery is getting low. Yeah. Oh, God, go and recharge. Say, no, 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 I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Those who turn to God, who honor God with their time and with their life, you can't compare them with normal people. You can't. In Isaiah 64 and verse 4, are we still together? Yeah. Isaiah 64 and verse 4, please clear your throat. I need you to read this by yourself. Ready? Read. Let's wait for some people, please. Are you ready? Go, let's read. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Who acts for the one who waits for him? Do you know when Apostle Paul quoted the scripture, he switches waiting on God to love in him. Say, for I had not seen nor hear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man what God has made ready for those who love him. Because it's only when you see this world is so busy, it's only love that can make you create time for God. Why do you create time for your kids? You love them. Why do you create time for your spouse? You love them. Listen, giving to chances. You will never have time for your family. You will never have time for anyone you call a loved person. But we take time 
and create time and make space for people and things. Look at that again, verse 4. The Bible says there's no telling. There is no telling how God acts for those who wait upon him. Tap your neighbor and say, I'm going to wait upon God. Come on, say, I'm going to wait upon God. Say, neighbor, I'm going to tap into this strategy. You can never imagine the benefit that is available to those who spend time with God. You can't. You can't imagine it. When you decide and you say to yourself, I am looking unto God first on this circumstance. I'm not going to look to men. The song we sang, I shall not be afraid of 10,000 of people. Because there's a provision in your Bible that says a thousand can fall at your side. 10,000 at your right hand. And they do not come near you. Only with your eyes will you see and behold and see the reward of the wicked. That is for those who have learned how to wait. How busy are you today? There are 24 hours in a day. Don't even let us talk about 24 hours. Let's talk about 168 hours in a week. You spend two hours in church. Once it's two hours, 30 minutes, you're looking at it. You have to come out of Even the two hours. You're on the phone. Instagram. And I'm not against Instagram. Twitter. Your attention span is so small. Some of us live in the cloud. If someone abuse you, you are there. Someone just abuse me now. Just abuse me. <laughs> Tap your neighbor say, calm down, calm down, calm down. You are living in a cloud cuckoo land. It's not real. Everybody thinks you're successful, but you're broke. You are not really there. You know it. Hallelujah. I'm so sorry. You know I'm the only person that can talk to you like this. Listen, God wants to take us places. Places. I can never forget. There's a road called Offa Road in Ilorin. Offa Road. It's just adjacent to my, my family house, GR Ilorin. I didn't have a car. So I used to go to that junction to get a taxi. Those watching me from Ilorin know what I'm talking about. I stood in front of that place. And I sat on the block because there was no taxi. You had to go to a place called post office if you wanted the taxi. And most cabs were filled from that place. It's only by chance that one person would drop and you would just pair with someone. So I stood there for a long time. I had to just rest on the block. And the Lord began to talk to me. And sitting on that block that day, I remember that day like yesterday. I made up my mind to do full-time pastoring on that block. And not to work. Now, this time is not like now that a pastor could be glamorous. You chose to be a pastor 22 years ago. You chose poverty. Particularly the city I resided. No template, no example of one person that you could even say, my pastor at the time was using bike. Not, listen, listen. Not a motorbike. Suzuki. <laughs> No template. And it was, a, it, was, it, was a, it was a professor. He was struggling. So no template of this kind of glamour. Made up my mind. Not because I had the strength, not because I was perfect. But I just made up my mind that to go that route. And I remember my father asking me questions, calling on my siblings and telling them, what in the world is wrong with this boy? Are you following what I'm trying to say to you? That decision, that singular decision, that singular decision switched my life. Switched my life. And I know why you're not clapping. I understand. I really do. I really do. God wants to honor you. Every time I drive to this church, I see cars and I see all of you. Many of you are more intelligent than me. Many of you are more anointed. Many of you have been walking with God for a long time. And I'm just so humbled. And I really am. I'm just so humbled. This is what is called honor. The pastor is the only person that will talk for one hour. Nobody replies it. Nobody replies it. I had no idea. I had no idea what it was. Now imagine where God could take you to. With all the prophets that came to my house, all the people that spoke, all the people that I 
empty. But none of them picked it that I will ever be a pastor. There is something you have that you have no idea about. And it's only your maker that understands it. Maybe you're rich, you're comfortable. I was from a very comfortable family too. One of the reasons why I didn't have a car at the time was because of this course. My father said, eh? Pastor, take everything from me. What is it? If he, it's because he has things that he's thinking of. Pastor, if he doesn't have anything, no money, no, no advantage, he said it will be correct. He said it will be correct. But I was just so convinced about it. Isaiah 45 and verse 19. And I don't blame us, a lot of us here. We don't have templates. Most people that say they are holy, they are broke. Listen, I'm sorry to say this. This is the reason why I try to dress well. This is the reason why I try to present myself well. Because growing up, if someone was holy, ah, it's as if they put hammer in their suit. <laughs> so when they're telling me, come and do it, I'm like, am I supposed to be like you? No, 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 I don't want it. And you see the children of this generation think different. While you attack someone like me and think I'm extravagant, you think I'm frivolous, well, there will be a lot of, you know, explanations in heaven. I remember God telling me, he said, I'm sending you to a generation that is different from some of your colleagues. You need to present properly. Hallelujah. You need to market properly. So, one of the reasons why people don't pray, you see, Muslims don't struggle with this. My kids are schooled with high profile Muslims. Some of them princes in their school. That's the way they think. As someone was telling me some days ago, they had one atheist in their class, a teacher atheist. So, everybody was asking themselves, Who are you? And the school was in an Arab country. And he was actually scared because I'd warned him. Please, preach, but with style. <laughs> Don't put yourself in trouble. He said, I'm a Christian. Said, wow, that's good. Who are you? I'm Muslim. One person, I'm atheist. Everybody came on in. Those Muslim boys came on in. Okay, so where are you going when you leave? <laughs> Listen, those guys are not rebellious to their parents because they are rich. Have you seen a Jewish boy that is rebellious before? No. Because what he will eat. It's not even his father that made it. His great grandfather already. So his, his life was planned. Most of the reasons why people are rebellious is, you know, you're talking to me and I'm looking at your life. How many of you thought about that about your father? You love him, but the thing is, ah, okay, let me give you this joke so that you can get it. I know you don't want to, you don't want to believe me. So a father took, are you all still here? I'm time conscious today. A father took his son and they went for the graduation ceremony in his son's school. So they said, uh, Mark 403. Ah! The man was saying, Yoruba, Omonu. Omonu means, ah, that's a child. That, those are real children. <laughs> Chemistry 406. Uh, Priscilla. So, 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 so. The father was like, hmm. those are children. Omonu. The boy didn't say a word. When they were leaving, the boy and the father went to the bus stop. They were walking to the bus stop. All the SUVs, the, the Rolls Royces were passing. The boy said, hmm. Babanu. <laughs> Meaning, ah, those are fathers. <laughs> if you don't prosper, uh. They're telling your children God is good. Why do you think pastors' kids are so rebellious? It's not happening anymore. Pastors' kids were the worst. Growing up, they are mad at God. They don't even want to hear God. Because if this God that sees my father, this faithful, I had a pastor's... Uh, Son, who was my very good friend growing up, Mr. Precious, also. One elder in the church will be the one that will pick one child. And pay. So, if you are lucky to be picked by a rich man, your school will be different. What kind of lifestyle. 
that's never God. That's not God. That's not God. I don't know the kind of God, the picture you have about God. God is so good, they call him God. We are not tapping into what God has made of it. Now, I told you to turn into Isaiah 45, 19. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I did not say to the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. When you see someone seeking me, ah, uh, there will be a mark. Go check the Bible. Check the, check the Old Testament. When someone starts getting close to God, their life starts to change. Augusta, yeah. it's not about uh, for me that you're spiritual. It's not, no, 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 no. no. And I'm not talking down on you if you're going through a process right now. So all of us will go through a process. But trust me, the mark of you seeking God is improved. Haven't you read Proverbs 4, 9, 4, 4 18? The path of the just person is like a shining light that shines ever brighter. Tap your neighbor say, this is the least I will ever be. Say, if you lie, be 500, plan against me. This is the least I will ever be. Until the perfect day. Glory be to God. I want you to watch after this service how your life will change. Just watch it. Watch how opportunities will come. Watch how everything will switch when you put God on top of your prayer, listen, don't turn to anybody to get this template. We, some of us here, are going to be the first to start it. Amen. See, the Bible says it shall come to pass in the last days that someone will hold the skirt of him that is a Jew and say, take me to your God. You know why people are not holding you saying, take me to your God? They are not seeing results. And I'm not preaching that you should come to church just come to come and take from God. That's not what I'm preaching. Please. What I'm preaching is once you build a relationship with God, everything begins to change. Everything begins to change. Let me tell you something. The antidote to the shame of men is the face of God. The antidote to the shame of men is the face of God. For we looked at him and we were like him and we were not ashamed. Why? What did we do? We looked to him. The Bible says they go from strength to strength. How many people? Every one of them. Why? Because they appear before God. Listen to me. Knowing God is your greatest asset. If you didn't hear me. If you heard me, I would have told you. You are a minister, you are a pastor listening to me. I don't know how you are listening to me today. Your number one asset, your number one asset is knowing God. Now let me tell you something that will shock you. If you don't know who sent you, you will be sent. <laughs> it took Moses knowing who sent him for him to take a rod, a rod, <laughs> a rod, and appear before Moses. Imagine me appearing before Donald Trump. World power. He said, I want to see Pharaoh. What is in his hand? A stick. <laughs> Let him come in. And he told Pharaoh, the people that have served you for 430 something years. I want to take them away. What is your hand? Check outside whether it came with the truth. A stick. That's not even big enough. That's not big enough. It took knowing God for Moses to stand in front of the rest, sea, seeing Pharaoh and saying, wait and see the salvation of the Lord. Now, I want to ask you a question. What was his food program when he was taking 3 million people into the wilderness? What was his food program? What was his health program? What was his clothing program? Even if he had money in the wilderness, what will they buy? That should have been genocide. But the Bible says their clothes did not wax old. Their shoes did not grow old. As they were growing, their clothes were growing. One day, they were hungry. God said, angels, don't eat today. Your food, send it to the congregation of Moses. It took someone who understood God to take that kind of step. Your greatest asset you should know, listen, you may go left, though, but if you know God personally, that's your greatest asset. That is your greatest asset. For they that know they are God, shall what? I'm not enjoying you closer. And they will do what? Listen, the reason why you are being exploited and you're not doing the exploit is that you don't know your God. 
I want to ask you a question. How many souls have you won this year? Since you've been a Christian, what can the kingdom of God say? This thing is happening because of her, because of him. Are you critical of other people? Those who know they are God. Ah! Out of everything Apostle Paul could pray for, he said that I may know him. That I may know him. And the power. Because knowing him ushers you into. Please, please, I'm going to say, I'm about to say something controversial. If you find yourself praying for prayer all the time, watch yourself. When praying for power all the time, watch yourself. How can you be intimate with God and not have power? I have to question that relationship. And just in case you're not getting me, I'm going to say something because I know you're intelligent. You are closest to the richest person in Nigeria. Close, close, close. He confides in you. You guys talk. Let me tell you how you know you're close to God. When you always be alone with him. You are always alone. You know there are people, if you go to meet Buhari now, President Buhari, you are likely not to be alone with him. You're like that caliber of person, but God craves to be alone with you. That's what we call closeness. And you are one on one with Buhari. You are the last person he, he can see if you choose to. You are the first person he can see if you, if you choose to. And you are broke. It's a lie. Do you know? He doesn't even need to give you money. Just that information. There are people that will bring money to you and say, you know what? Just put up, just put a word. Oh, come on, somebody. It's not possible. It is, there is something wrong with that fellowship. Do you know God can put something in your life today? And you be, your value goes up. Who was Peter? Peter. Who was Peter before? Peter that in front of a little girl, he was shaking like a jellyfish. Peter went back to his past. He thought his life had ended. Suddenly, this power came on him. Remember, Jesus said, you need to wait. You need to stay with him for a long time. This thing came on Peter. Peter preached. 15 minutes message. 3,000 people gave their life to Christ. I've not even hit that record. 2,000 years after he did it, I've not hit that record. 15 minutes. 3,000. It's not this power and the, and the energy you put into it. He said, say to Zerubbabel, not by power, not by my, my spirit carries it out. And you know what? Peter was supposed to go for a meeting. He couldn't make it. He said, what shall we? He just thought he, no, no, no antecedent to it. He just thought, okay, take a prom from my body. Just go and put it on the sick. And people, cripple started jumping up. Listen, Peter, how could he have a low self esteem? It's not possible. Yeah. Somebody didn't greet me in that church. I'm leaving the church. You know, yeah, something's wrong with you. You are not functioning at full capacity. You are jacking. Come on, tap your neighbor. Say, come on, stop jacking. Stop jacking. And one day, Peter was walking. He just laid. He couldn't even, he didn't even have the time to be laying out. Just a shadow. The same Peter. A shadow. But God started his life. It was a life of prayer. One day, he, he had fasted. And they told him food was not ready. Just between meals, he quickly went to pray. The first miracle he encountered was when he was going to church at the hour of prayer. That was their lifestyle. That was their lifestyle. I wish I had time to show you about Jesus Christ. If you're in ministry listening to me, everything is against you. Everything is against you. The culture is against you. The people you are sent to, they have a pastor that is against you. Strongholds, belief system, mindset, paradigm against you. Demons, you're on their list. And you don't want to pray? <laughs> you are wearing designers? <laughs> I laugh in Greek. <laughs> By the time they are done with you, you will not, they will not only run away from church, you will not only run away from ministry, you may not go to church again. <laughs> to wait is to consult the Lord before deploying any human effort. As a lifestyle. Matthew chapter 6 verse 6. Quickly guys. I've got a few more minutes. 
Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6. Is anybody getting anything? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. In case you're here for the very first time or you're seeing me for the first time, let me tell you something. I talk to God more than I talk to any human being. Every day. I hardly say things like that, but just, so just you have good respect that I have a right to teach you. Every day. Every day. There's no way God can trust you with this, as small as it is, if you don't have a relationship. It will implode. It will self-destruct. Matthew 6 and verse 6. Hallelujah. I wanted you to read Matthew 6 and verse 6 by yourself. At least I want to help me with some air. It's hallelujah. Matthew 6 and verse 6. Glory be to God. Look at Jesus speaking here. He said, but when, but you, when you pray, go into your room. What is he talking about? Have I lost you? Did I say something wrong? What is he talking about? What he's talking about is... I don't just want you to pray when you have problems. I don't just want you to pray when you're in church. I want you to develop a relationship with me. I want you to develop a relationship with me. On Tuesday, I preached on help for victory, for sudden victories. There's a lot of help that we're not tapping into, all of us. Lots of help. Lots and lots. Imagine how much you complain every day. Imagine how much you negate the grace upon your life. You see negatives. It's because you don't pray. See, we, we are like chameleon. I'm sorry to say that. We take on the empire. So, if you hang around people too much, you think like me. Let me tell you what the Holy Spirit told me yesterday. Those, ah, those who wait upon the Lord, they speak. I'm going to come to it. I'm going to come to it. You will remind me. Look at that. Matthew 6 6. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, talking about being alone with God, talking about intimacy, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in the secret, where will He reward you? So when we don't see your reward openly, and I'm not saying you won't go through a process, but it's been a long time. We should start seeing your reward. Don't pray only when you have needs or you want things from God. Even you don't like friends that they only come to you and only call you when they want things from you. But people who are just loving, who are just there, who just care about you. Sometimes they just listen to you. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. How many of you have spent money, you, monies you didn't plan to spend? Just because you saw someone that loves you. That's why Apostle Paul changes waiting when he quoted in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, he said, those who love God. This was David's secret. Think if I remember, David prayed five times a day. Prayed five times a day. This was Daniel's secret. And this is what the enemy wants to attack in our lives all the time. What was the, 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 the law against Daniel? I should not pray. Why? That's why I said, if, you can't, if you've not been praying, you are already under that attack. You will see the manifestation later. You have to switch after the service. Because you were not wired. The life you received was not designed to function without God. Elijah's secret was prayer. Esther's secret was prayer. Jesus' secret was prayer. <laughs> Jesus was going to choose 12 disciples. Guess what he did? He prayed all night. Yet, one of them was the devil. <laughs> How much more are you that didn't pray at all? What's happening? Uh, uh, you are about to enter a relationship. Did you pray about it? Eh, we, I prayed about This is the problem. I pray about it. Because I already told God, God, this guy, my husband, I just want to inform you. 
pray. I'm, I'm just going around the issue. Praying about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus. After miracles, Jesus Christ escaped not to rest. You know what happened to Elijah? Elijah killed the prophets of Baal. And they were saying, Elijah is God. Elijah is God. That's the meaning of Elijah. When people are shouting, Elijah, Elijah. Elijah means Elijah is God. Elijah. So somehow he was hearing, God's man, big boy. Ah, see you now. Oh, it, only you. He even went to God and said, I'm the only prophet. God said, shut up. Who told you you're the only prophet? There are other prophets I've reserved for myself. The next minute, Jezebel released a word to threaten him. You know what Elijah did? He went to hide under a broom, a broom tree. And he said, Lord, kill me. If he wanted to die, he won't ask God. You would have killed yourself. After victory, what makes people go into defeat? Lack of prayer. Lack of prayer. Lack of prayer. That doesn't mean you will not be attacked. That doesn't mean you will not go through a process. That doesn't mean you are not going to go through stuff, but you will come out more victorious. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. I want to show you one account. I always laugh at, you know, younger pastors. I'm still young. But you see, when a younger pastor who doesn't have experience come to you, how you know, just listen to them for five minutes. They will never tell you the souls that are one in their ministry. They will not tell you what the Lord is saying. They say things like, oh, um, <clears throat> Know that comedian? He even bought me. That senator, I pray for him. He doesn't do anything until I pray for him. Oh, that person. You know what they do? They come to a place like Abuja and go and sit at the National Assembly for two days. The man is doing meetings. Say, ah, pastor, I'm sorry. Give pastor cook. Give him cook. Give him. <laughs> Check your Bible. No prophet operated like this. That doesn't mean they were not honoring but no prophet operated. In Mark chapter 1 verse 35. Hallelujah. I hope you know that when I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching not to the people seated here alone. Hallelujah. The Bible says, oh, I wish I could read from 34. 34. Then he healed many who were sick with various diseases, cast out demons, and he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. Look at the next verse. Now in the morning, having risen a long while. Now, it was, the disciples did not cast out any demon. They only took the names of those who gave their lives to Christ and they slept like they were dead. <laughs> One of the things you realize again is when you begin to inculcate fellowship with God, particularly if you have a date with the Lord, if you say, Lord, I'm waking up at four, the Holy Spirit will wake you four on the dot. <laughs> Even if you slept for four hours, you woke up with so much strength. Particularly if you've learned not to, you've learned to operate this way. You know, one day they saw Muhammad Ali jogging very early in the morning, in the cold. He said, Muhammad Ali, why are you jogging in the cold? Do you love doing this? He said, I don't love jogging in the cold, but I love being a winner. I love being a champion. If I want to continue to be a champion, there are things I must do consistently. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Listen to me. When you start doing this, you will not like it. You have to stand up. How did you pass in school? You wanted to sleep, you put your leg in water. I'm not saying be technical like that. But ask anybody with a good body shape. The first time they hit the gym, pain hit them. If you stop, that's the end. You have to go back again. You have to go back again. So don't think, I'm saying it right now, it looks easy. You get home today, the devil knows you've heard this, he's going to wait for you. First 15 minutes, your mind is wandering. Eh, you've not done your laundry. Tomorrow is Monday. Eh, eh, just remember Muhammad Ali. Get back there. Get back there. By the time you've done this for three weeks, you'll be shocked. You are with people, but you just want to leave. You can't wait to go and be with the Lord. How many of you are like that right here? You can't just wait to go and be with the Lord. You can't just wait. Being let go, you're just speaking in tongues. That doesn't mean you don't have struggles. That doesn't mean you're perfect. But you've learned how to take your weaknesses to God. 
You've learned how to depend on him for everything. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Look at that Mark 135. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary pray place. There he prayed. There he, he could have prayed with his disciples. He could have said, join your hands together. I'm tired. Don't, everybody just pray for me. No. He went alone. How to develop relationship with God is to start inculcating that idea of being alone with God. You will hear things you not believe. One of my sons in the Lord called me three days ago. I think after Tuesday, he said, Pastor, I just opened the Bible. I'm just seeing mysteries right now. I'm just seeing. Said, That's the way it works. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. I have a mentor in the city. Whenever I talk to him, he will just say, God is good. God is good. And then start dropping revelations for me. I said, sir, where do you get all? He said, listen, whenever I'm talking, please write it down. He's coming to me as I'm talking to you. He said, it's because when I get a good listener, it flows. Sometime before I, before I call him, I would have prayed. If I call him after praying, but I need a word from the Lord. I need direction. I need someone to lift me up. He spoke to me early hours of this morning and he said to me, did you write those things down? I said, yes, sir. He said, send them to me. Because it was, as I was talking to you, that the revelation was pouring out. Pray. In the name of Jesus, your life will take a new turn. Amen. It doesn't matter if you're a businessman. You don't have to be a pastor to do this. Some of you saw my picture with uh, uh, Bishop Dale Brunner in uh, Atlanta. He's a third generation billionaire pastor. Third generation. They produce air products. His father single-handedly funded their church. And every Sunday will come up to take the tithe. Tell everybody I'm a billionaire. I'm not pastor. I'm not here to take your money. Tithing took me here. And all his children, despite the fact that they are all businessmen, all of them are serving the Lord. Not one. His wife is 80 something years old, healthy, serving the Lord. See, there are dimensions that Nigeria is still waiting for. You don't have to be a pastor. I hate titles. You don't have to be a pastor. There are preachers without titles in this place. There are people here that you will never be ordained, but you will enter places that ordained people cannot enter. Because God is getting ready to prepare you. If I'm talking about you, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. No matter where you work, don't fail God. Because God has called you to do extraordinary things. The Bible says in verse 35, look at that. I need to, I need to show you something before I close today. The Bible says, he went down and departed to a solitary place. And what did he do? He prayed. Next verse. The Bible says, Simon and those who were with him, they were searching for him. They said, uh, he has gone again. So they were searching all the mountains, the bush, they look on the tree, where is he? Wait, what's happening to him? The Bible says in verse 37, when they found him, look at what they said. Everyone is looking for you. Can I pray for someone here? In the name of Jesus, what you've been looking for will look for you. Amen. Can I hear your email like thunder? Amen. You will tell yourself, why have I been living an ordinary life? Oh man! Are looking for you. You join their clique, you bend your rule, you even took alcohol just to get this. Listen, I'm telling you what you've not seen the template. Not many people have understood this. All men are looking for you. Please sit down. Let me show you something before I close. It's a good place to round off, but I need to show you something before I close. Glory be to God. Now, I'm not able to read them to you because of time. So Jesus took his disciples after supper and they went to a garden called Getsman. Again, I'm marketing Israel. <laughs> I think I'm going to sell tickets to think you guys Israel. If you went to Getsman, you will see that it's located on the mountain of Olives. And one of the things you're going to notice about Getsman is that the Jewish people believe because he's been written concerning the Messiah, that the Messiah was going to land on Mount Olives, and Mount Olives was split into two. And of course, the dead in Christ will rise. So their burial ground, how many of you have been to Israel? Wave your hands to me. Did you go to Mount Olives? Did you see the burial grounds around Mount Olives? Did you see that? Yeah. So the burial ground of the Jewish people is just beside. So the garden in Mount Olives is Gethsemane, and then the burial ground. So he went there to pray in the garden. Went there to pray. 
And you know what he did? He took his disciples along. I wish I had time to show you. The Bible says he said to them, please, I am distressed. Pray for me. And he went. When he came back, they were sleeping. This man prayed one prayer point for one hour. Lord, if it is your will, Lord, I want this cup to be taken, but if it's your will, Lord, help me. One prayer point, one hour. One hour. He came to the people that should have helped him to pray. They were sleeping. He went away again. He said, ah, Peter, you are the one that I'm going to hand over there. You mean you can't intercede for one hour? But the Bible says their eyes were heavy. Their eyes were heavy. Then he went again to pray. Maybe another one hour, maybe. But there was no information about that. He came back and he said to them, ah, you mean you guys cannot stay with me? Please trace 44 or 45. The Bible says, so he left them the third time saying the same words. Look at verse 45, everybody. Verse 45, he came to his disciples. He said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? He said, behold. Ah, uh, this is what the Greek says. And you can look at any other version that goes like that. You can sleep now. You can sleep now. He told them not to sleep first time. He told them not to sleep second time. But when he came the third time, he said, you can sleep now. What does that mean? He had generated power. The Bible says he sweated and his sweat had fused with his blood capillary that he began to bring out blood out of his sweat. He had generated so much power, ready to go there. You are right. You've written a proposal. You're going for an interview. Have you generated power? Remember, it's in you already. But you need to stay it up. Don't wait till the day you need it. You, you can't say, I'm going for a competition tomorrow. I'm going to the gym throughout today to build muscles. It doesn't work that way. You have to plan for it the day you don't need it. So that when you need it, you just take an enemy and yank him. If you faint on the day of power, it is because your strength is small. Not because the enemy is powerful. Your strength is small. And they go from strength to strength. Everyone that appear, just for appearing. Remember? The antidote to shame. We looked unto him and we were lightened and we were not ashamed. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah? I'm not enjoying you over there. I said shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus was done with that. And he said let's go. The hour has come. And then a cohort of soldiers. Now a cohort, I wish I had time to explain this, is a legion divided by nine. Just Google it. What, is, what does a cohort mean in Roman military? Is a legion. A legion is 5,000 divided by nine. So that's 555. Five, five. So approximately 600 people. Hamped came to him. To, to catch only me. Was I not in the temple every day? He said, but this is the hour of darkness. The hour has come. But I'm prepared for it. There's a guy called Malchus. This guy was a PR guy for the high priest. Peter hated Malchus because, you know, the blogs, he had spoken against Jesus. <laughs> the headline papers, this guy had already reported rubbish about Jesus. Peter hated him. Please don't be, don't be like me. I was dumb when I thought Peter was trying to cut his hair. Please don't be dumb like me. Wasn't trying to cut it. Wanted to cut it. But let me tell you what happened. <laughs> let me tell you what happened so that you, you get the picture. When they came to Jesus, Jesus had generated so much power. Remember, he was worried before. But he came at some point and said, You guys, don't worry. I can handle him. Because those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You know the meaning of renew? Exchange. If you have a good Bible, look at the margin when you get home. Isaiah 40, 31. The word renew is exchange. I take my weakness to God. I take his strength. So when Jesus came back, he said, you can sleep now. I received the energy. You are fainting because you've refused to appear where you're supposed to appear on a consistent basis. They came to Jesus, a cohort. Looked into the midst of them and saw Judas. 
And they said, 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 who are you looking for? He said, we seek Jesus. Who is Jesus here? Jesus said, I am he. And they fell down because there was so much power. So much power. Look at your neighbor, please, with an attitude that I wanted to have. Tell your neighbor, say, don't compare me to who I used to be yesterday. Hey, 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 push somebody, tell them. Say, don't compare me to who I used to be yesterday. Say, I've appeared before the Lord. I am different. I have moved from strength to strength. The Bible says a man with a clean hand shall become stronger and stronger. Tap your neighbor, say, this is the least I will ever be. Come on, push somebody, say, don't compare me to who I used to be yesterday. Say, I've appeared before the Lord. I've moved from strength to strength. If I'm talking about you, shout, yes, somebody. In fact, the Greek says they stepped back and hit the ground. Listen, they hit the ground. They were shocked that ah, I'm on the ground. It was not when Malchus was standing that Peter caught it. No, 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 sir. When Malchus was on the floor, he wanted to take advantage. You couldn't have a lever to have one sword against 600 Roman well-kitted soldiers. But when the power fell him down, eh, he reached out to the guy that he's been beefing since. What did you cut off his neck? The guy dodged it and it was his hair that he cut. And against Hollywood, I said, Jesus picked the hair. Go and check it. Jesus just touched the hair. He said, ah, don't arrest anybody. Touch nobody. Jesus did not pick the hair and put it back. Go and read it. Jesus taught the year and did a creative miracle. <laughs> Only one of the Gospels reported it. Look. It was Luke that reported it. He didn't take the one on the floor. The Bible says he touched it. And the Greek, I started it. He squeezed his hand there till there was vibration. And he did that miracle. Do you think Malchus did not think that Jesus was the son of God? You think he didn't know? The Bible says on the cross, the soldier said, surely, he is the son. They knew. They knew. Church history tells us that even Pontius Pilate's wife was the greatest sponsor of the gospel because Pontius Pilate committed suicide after because he knew he killed God. Go and read Josephus' work. You see it there. But this is what I want to tell you that made me delay you. And I hope this is worth it. When you get home, go read down. The Bible says there was another miracle that occurred. Remember, they were beside the burial ground. How do Jewish people bury people? Jewish people bury their dead naked. Jesus was brought down from the cross naked. And they covered them with something, leaning. There was a young boy that was freshly buried. When Jesus said, I am. The same word that is spoken in John 8, 58. Before your father Abraham was, I am. When Moses asked him in the Old Testament. Because Isaiah said, this is him that is coming from of old, from everlasting. This is not Muhammad that found God. This is God in flesh. And he said to Moses, when you get to Egypt, tell them, I am sent you. So when he said, I am, it was from that power. The boy that was buried got back to life. I'm, I can bet you've never seen it before. Got back to life and woke up all of a sudden and then saw, looked ahead and saw, saw a, a cohort of soldiers and moved near them. I was watching what was happening. He held his linen in his hand, covered himself because he was naked. The Bible says when they saw that this boy showed up, they grabbed him because they couldn't afford for another testimony to go to town that they raised the dead. The Bible says the boy left and ran away naked. He ran away naked. Listen to me. You cannot imagine the kind of power you can generate if you consistently hang with Even the dead, he did, not, he did not budget for. Got up from the dead. The miracle of the here, get him back. Them falling down. Listen to me. I prophesy to you after this message. The things you've been bowing down before will bow before you. Can I hear a faith believing, receiving amen? amen? I don't care the family you're from. When you decide to fellowship with the Lord on a consistent basis and maintain being alone with God, you initiate a, you initiate a process that will make you stand out amongst your peers. The days of struggles are over for you. 
the Lord will breathe upon you. Amen. Can I hear your email like thunder? Amen. The Lord will breathe upon you. Amen. You will function from Zion. Amen. Your mind will be fruitful. Amen. Your brain will be incubated. Amen. You will know what to do. Amen. New gifts will rise out of you. Amen. The Holy Spirit will function in your life at full capacity. Amen. Everything will work for you. Amen. Come on. Lift your hands, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You're here today. You're not saved. I want to encourage you to be saved. And how you do it, the only thing I just require, we're out of time, but what I require you to do is to just confess Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior, and there will be a new beginning for you. Please, everybody, let's encourage them. I'm going to call for you after the service, but we don't have time to call you right now because of time. See after me, say, Father, in the name of Jesus. That's not everybody. That's not everybody. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Say, I heard your word, and I believed your word. I believe that Jesus came in the flesh. I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe that Jesus was buried. But I believe that he was raised from the dead. Everything Jesus did by his death, resurrection, and ascension. I receive into my human spirit. I receive the gift of eternal life. Lord, I declare a new beginning. I receive the new life. Holy Spirit, reign in me. Live in me. Move in me. And have your being in me. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's say. I want us to sing the song before we pray. Very short prayer. But you need not to hear this word in vain. Hallelujah. This word, this song is an old hymn. But I wanted to pay attention to the lyrics of this song, even as you sing it. I wanted to pay attention to the lyrics and let them overwhelm your heart. Think about it properly. Don't sing it like you sang it in your traditional church. Think about it. Hallelujah. It says, what a friend we have in Jesus. I need the lyrics to be up. I want the people to see the lyrics. Hallelujah. Media guys, are you ready for us? I need them to see the lyrics. Have you found it? Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands and pray in tongues. Let's wait for them. I need you to see it. Come on, pray in tongues. Thank you, Jesus. Look into the screen, everybody. What a friend we have in Jesus. Everybody is singing with me. Our sins and griefs to be. What a privilege to carry, oh, to carry, oh God, everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we have for a fear. Less things we Oh, what the privilege to pray to you. We do, we do not care. Everything to God in prayer. Everyone, I wanted to sing with me and meditate on it. Ah, we try and Trouble anywhere is the trouble anywhere we should never be we should never be the story into the glory prayer we find a friend so 
What a privilege we forfeit just because we do not take it to the Lord in prayer. I want everyone here to say after me, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. That is not everybody. Say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I relinquish, I relinquish every, care every care in my heart, in my heart. Every, worry every worry in my life. In my life. I, lay them at your feet. I lay them at your feet. I give them to you. I, them to you. I, do, not I do not know how to pray, how to pray. as I ought. As I ought. But you make intercession for me. Speak through me. Pray through me. Step into my case. Straighten every rugged thing. Feel every valley. Lower every mountain. In the name of Jesus. If you have a prayer language, please go ahead and pray in tongues. Come on. Go ahead and pray in tongues. Raise your voice. Raise your voice. Raise your voice. Raise your voice. Come on, Koza. Come on, Koza. If you're going to do it at home, start now. Start now. Start now. Start now. Masheda kora bahala bakatea bahali gedende. Liga tore te puka satala bantahaye. You know the key? Raise your voice in intercession. Shade bokoro topo hola bahaye bahalaya. Some people can pray properly if you're not praying against the devil. Some people can pray properly if they're not praying about the need. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Malera ta bahaku satele bonte, lika rote poka sonte le kaye baba, la korenda bahaku zate poranta haye, lintri ke prondi ke le bonka santa ya baha, la rote poko sonte le kete ke rete te te, liki di di buguru tu huma suka poka talaye. La cabagara tapaka son telebron di gelebonte. Eh, que de 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 corra da 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 bahaya. Ma ba 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 cote poke de te poca sonte. Isa di corre moco son tashling rede. Malia de malia de malia de malia de. When you start, it doesn't flow like it's supposed to. But you keep at it. And you raise your voice in faith. The Holy Ghost will carry you. Come on, can I hear you at the back? At the foyer, can I hear your prayer? What about the prayer mothers, the praying mothers, and the prayer, the prayer place there, and the nursing mothers? Outside, can I hear your voice? In Polanco Church, raise your voice. In Lagos Church, raise your voice. In Lori, raise your voice. In Dubai, raise your voice. Every other person watching from your home, raise your voices. Makote lekerete pohoya. Shadebo. Malite kelebo kasa ndarara karabo sete bondaye eh kira da bahaki kalebo shali la la bonke te 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 kada da 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 bahala bakata ya brakadide come on it's on you it's on you it's on you the power of God is strong on you it's strengthening the crooked it's leveling the core de boko son talibaya Kabaya bakata la braga di bonde le bonta ya Satrika braga di brada bakara tapaye Lande de de keren te pele meke te le bonta ya Maybe you've not prayed for weeks Maybe you've not prayed for months Take advantage of now Take advantage of this moment Mashara bakata la bahaya Leka to para tapaye te Kilande de 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 Kere bobo bonta da bahaya Come on, Shilala. Kibi adi karanta pakasa talaya. Kaliba ratata tapalabaya. Kele mele bonde bo koronto po koronto po holia. Likara bababa bakasa takabalaya. Come on, generate power that you're going to need in December. Generate wisdom you're going to need in November. Come on, somebody. What you would need in your office tomorrow. Maremba baba kansa tapalabaya. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, lift up one hand with me. Say, Lord, I receive fresh fire. I will not remain the same again. This grace upon my life will not be in vain. Thank you for carrying me on the eagle's wings. I will not have to struggle. 
my life is changed forever. The things I should have done that was not in line with my purpose, I are buried forever. I embrace the things that are commensurate to my destiny. It's a new day for me. I'm a new person. It's a new week for me. It's a new season in my life. The season of testimonies. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Oh, come on, clap about it and shout about it. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve you here today.